Hello and welcome to Gag of the Millennial. A show where we talk about pop culture, current events, and spill the hot Darjeeling right into your lap. Ooh, scaldy waldy. Oh, don't get gout. Don't get out. <laughs> I've got goiter. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get my goiter, goiter you got to get, get with my gout. gout. Hi oh, everyone! Hello. We are back for a brand we new are. episode of Gag of the Millennial. Oh, we are, we are indeed. That is what we are here doing. We are, we this are, is us. That's th- happening now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's and, been a long day. And, and 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 we have a little fun announcement we were announcing towards the end of this show. So we're keep your ears up. Married. We're getting married. <laughs> We've got eight children. I'm adopting a small child called Blair. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. It's name. a blob. <laughs> it's oh. Flubber. How are you doing, Luxaria? I'm doing all right, actually. We've just had quite an, a day so far yes. from our little filming excursions. So filming excursions for yeah. our job. Yeah, we we're pirates. Um, we have been filming multiple videos today, so this is our third multiple one. Multiple shocking videos. Yes, yeah, so shocking. We're ones. both a bit shocking like ones. exhausted right now. Exhaust. Yeah, I mean, exhausted is one way to put it. It is. We do a lot of Reddit videos where we go we through do. Reddit posts and we look, read comments and like read through the questions that we've done. Amelia Arso, we've done entitled parents. But we thought today what we will do is we're going to go on to one of the most popular reddits I think this is the most popular one, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. So it's got 35 million followers. Yeah, so it's like one of the biggest ones. Because the others we do have maybe have like five or six million. So it's like a proper one. And it's just basically Ask Ask Reddit. Reddit. So it's people go on and will just ask any question they possibly have ever wanted to know. Uh And Reddit just does their thing. Reddit does their thing and responds in usually some very interesting ways. And sometimes you might learn like a nugget or two of like really good life wisdom that you've never thought of before. Uh And then like 90% of it is just trash. It's just trash. (laughs) It's just trash. Yeah. I killed her in my sleep. <laughs> yeah. A dead body. A dead sponsor. So the first one that I'm going to ask is what life advice can just F off? Life of oh life advice that can just what F life off. advice can just f off you know like so it's kind of, I guess this person is asking you know like when I don't know you're down and out you're having a struggle bus and you've just got that like uncle who's just like well have you tried just you know not being gay yeah and no just like, I guess that does not help it anyway I so this is actually from you and I can't remember oh. it's actually not not no not my you, life no, no. advice was awful no no no, no. this is oh. from one this is from what you said in a video once oh. because I don't remember what it, I think it's a Janice one and you said that um whatever like when you you need to break someone down in order to oh, build yeah. them yeah uh, trash you, I'd like yes you could you could argue that the bullying that I faced in school made me a lot stronger. However, trauma is forever. If, <laughs> if like I'm still although yes, I've dealt with what happened to me in school. Obviously being an LGBT person, being very feminine, yeah. I was heavily bullied. But like to say, oh, I'm so glad you went through that because it made you stronger. Like I'd much rather not be beaten up and scared Absolutely. for that much. In the most pinnacle time of my life when I'm really developing who I am. I don't want to be like broken down and no. beaten and scared. You shouldn't say this to children. We're going to break you down. Like, no, don't do all that. Like rubbish. that is, that is a, a part of life advice I've heard many times that could literally just go and do one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of my favorite comments here from this one is by someone called Ginger Beefcake. Now I am partial Ooh, to a ginger beefcake. You are. Apparently. You've got a type. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they say pretty much anything about what age you have to be to buy a house, have kids, get married, have a career oh, or anything yeah. like that. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Seriously, every single person lives a different life than everyone else. Live your life the way it makes you happy if you want. It's up to you. I very much agree with this sentiment because life is not a race. Life is more of like a marathon and it has detours in certain places. I remember I said on one of my videos that like the person you are at 25 is kind of who you are going to be for like the rest of your life. Yeah, well that's when your brain stops developing, isn't it? It is, it is. It's, It's essentially when you stop, when you actually like fully reach adulthood. Life is not a race. Life, as I say, is a marathon with detours. It's more like a river and it meanders in all different places. It's a cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are still learning things about yourself. You may be like a pretty solid person. Like by 25, you might know your style you might like certain types of music like very much music tastes don't really change throughout your life like you kind of like what you like yeah you can't force yourself to like a genre of music you don't like you can kind of listen to like loads and loads and loads you might start remembering things but actually like do you like it there's a difference between like knowing it and liking it exactly that and i feel like this can be applied to lots of journeys that we have in life for example this person mentioned uh developing a career or having you know um uh, buying a house, things like that. So I don't have anyone in my like immediate family who has achieved more than I have. Mm-hmm. But I know for a fact that 
parents often have like set out life rules for people. They're yes. Like, you know, you grow up, you meet someone, you get married, you have babies, you buy a house, you get a car, you get a dog and then yeah, you die, yeah, yeah. basically. And you die. Die a dead body. <laughs> so I have never once in my life lived up to any of these standards. I moved to London in 2010 and was like, goodbye, any normal life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> became yeah. Became a club kid for years and then that became a problem. Left London and moved back. And yeah. thing is, well, I think with those kind of questions as well, like when you have set things, like people expect these things from you, but you have no idea how life is going to change and what yeah. things are going to be different. Like life now, the way things are, is so different to what it was when we were growing up. Yes. The idea that people Our would jobs se- didn't exist. Yeah. And the idea that people would expect us to do certain things when we were younger, yeah. it doesn't coincide with how life actually is now. It doesn't develop you into a well-rounded human being if yeah. somebody else has a plan for you. Yeah. There's one of these things that's, um, it's one of these like, la- you know, like live, laugh, love. What is that? What's it called? Like a, a An affirmation. Quote. Affirmation. I, I guess, there yeah. you go. There's one of those and it goes something like, I'm probably going to absolutely butcher this. Hey, did something- the cat and the fiddle. She ran up the hill. I was gonna say a slur. I know, I wasn't, no I wasn't gonna allow you, so I no. thought I'd say, yeah. It goes something like, if you don't work for your own dream, you'll become part of someone else's. Mm-hmm. And I'm a full believer in that kind of mentality of, you don't find yourself, you create yourself. Yes. You, when these people hit 40 and they're like, I just need to do a year away and find myself. Okay, you can, but like, you need to also put effort into what you want out of life. Yeah. If you've made decisions because somebody else has said you need a family you need a house blah blah by 40 and then one day you wake up and you're like i'm deeply unhappy with my life yes it's because you need to actually create something that you want and for your the, life. the sad thing as well i think uh a lot of straight people fall into this i've you know i've known people in my life who yeah. have just gotten married had kids and done and because like it's expected i expected and they're unhappy yeah and it, it's it's just because that's what you do as a straight person, you but as queer people and LGBT people, and all on spectrum, we get like to we our exactly, and that's, and that's cliche <laughs> to say that, but like you know, we we have to we face life in a very different way, yes. and you Practically know, practically from like birth, yeah, and especially if you're like feminine and you're more standing out, like if you if you can go under the radar a little bit more, you probably don't have the same maybe some of the struggle yeah. but like as a overtly camp gay man growing up my life trajectory and how i treated my life and how i did it was so astronomically different to everyone else i yeah. knew even though i was still having the same societal pressures put on me to have a family to get married to be normal to be straight to get, have a job where you work in a bank or something like yeah. it was still the same but my yeah. it just didn't match up with my life because i wasn't like everyone else no exactly do you know sometimes the da- the 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 expectations put onto you actually take years to unravel and yes. really understand why. Yep. Like I'm still dealing with some stuff from my like teenage years and being like, oh, actually that probably wasn't very helpful and I shouldn't have been thinking like that. But yeah. because it was just imposed on me yeah. by my environment, you then spend years unraveling them and sometimes it they never go away. No, 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 is, no. Yeah, so the next comment that is on this, uh, this one of like, what did I just say? Life advice can just F off. And it is... Cheaters never prosper. And someone has said, yes, they effing do. And this is the thing about like cosmic justice. I wouldn't say that it exists. Fate and karma only exist because we want to. We put want me- them to. We, so we as humans, we have such a uh, obsession with like labeling things and like making. We can never accept something as like a bit unknown. Or it just kind of happened. It's always like, no, this has to mean something. This has yeah. to be like, and it's it's a natural thing that humans do. So sometimes when you see a bad thing happen to someone who's been a bit horrible, you instantly go, oh, well, that was karma. When yeah. in reality, it was it's just, just a, life. It, it was just how life played out. It goes very back to that phrase, "Life's not fair." Yeah, and it and, really is. And I know this is a very isn't. extreme example, oh but just goodness. think of people like Jimmy Savile. Oh yeah, he got away with being a predator his entire and life, was, and so, wasn't found out till after he was dead. That is a perfect example, actually, of cheat. Like cheaters never prosper. Yeah, yes, they do. Yes, he was someone like disgusting, him, a rampant, problematic person, did exceptionally well for yep. years. Yeah, and never got found out until never, after he died. Never suffered a consequence for mm-hmm. what he did mm-hmm. what toxic behavior is for some reason becoming more accepted at this time fake f- news oh about yeah conspiracy theories about bloody covid in uh 5g and all this shit yeah. it's so weird now that there's so massive people with these huge podcasts that literally just talk about talk that bollocks yeah. and thousands and millions of people believe it yeah without any shred of critical thinking facebook has become like the cesspit of the internet it of really fake, has. Of false information I fake news facebook. and it, it's just like it's so weird now how conspiracy theories i love a conspiracy theory yes. we've done a whole podcast yeah, about yeah, it and we'll but, do another one as well and we are but like it's 
we don't sit there believing them. We did like I find I've I, I've watched so many flat earth things. Not yeah. because I'm interested in if the flat earth is actually flat, because I, I find it so mesmerizing about these people who believe like, they who close off their wholeheartedly minds. Wholeheartedly believe that the earth is flat. And it's 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 recently it's that it's this it's so in but mind you i think the the panini the the international panini that we just had yes yes has really exacerbated people's like the, it, i feel like people almost need that level of escapism sometimes to really just think that maybe like maybe the scientists have missed something and i'm right look honey i'm on yeah, the internet yeah. and all the world scientists have missed this it's <laughs> it's to me it's just so strange that the people who used to tell us when we were growing up don't, don't believe be- everything is the internet. And now the ones it's- who literally see some article on and Facebook and be like, yeah, it's true. Oh, yeah. I heard that the Chinese government made it. Yeah. So we can put 5G towers up yeah. and then the, the, the metal in your mask is a 5G antenna. Yeah, literally. Like, that, literally like, shut listen up. Listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. It's wild, isn't it? Just because of, wild. literally, and also it's just because of a headline. They haven't yeah. even like read they an article. They don't read the article. They no. never read the article. None of these people have read a scientific paper and they're out no. there trying to quote scientists and doctors. And I'm like, okay, so the doctor, you're saying you're you're you got this from who's talking on like i don't know pharmaceuticals is a chiropractor he's (laughs) never been in a laboratory what are you talking about like he doesn't know nothing but that is something that in recent years seems to have become like bigger and bigger and bigger where it's like you just it's it's actually scary how easily people can be convinced over the most ludicrous ideas yeah 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 so i'm gonna like move on a little bit from that to one that's really personal that's happened in my life so it's related to the the toxic trait that's kind of bothering me recently now i am in no way shape or form uh true scum or any like trans medicalist or whatever like that i think everybody's transition if you are trans looks different from everybody mm-hmm. else's and it shouldn't be gate kept but you should be conversion therapy in the yeah, uk yeah yeah you should go to yeah, conversion you should, therapy yeah. before you do all that yeah thanks boris yeah no, what I'm going to say is, I really don't like the sentiment of, if you don't know someone's pronouns, just call them they, them. Because that, to me, you are misgendering me by calling me they, them. The problem is, is with this specific topic, no matter what you do, someone is always going to be offended. Well, that, yeah. That's I, the yeah, issue. I do agree with that. So it's like, for you, they, them would offend you. I don't want to be called they, them either. I'd yeah. much rather someone just call me he. As a trans person yourself, I understand that you want to pass as a woman and yeah. be called... She, her. Yeah. And anyone who tells you that your opinion on that is wrong is disregarding your journey. My, my their, trans experience. Which then goes against what they're actually standing for to begin and with. Where actually, it's like you're telling other yeah. people how to live their lives. Yeah, when in reality, you're saying transition. don't tell me how to live mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I actually had this um, <clears throat> by a cis, a cis woman once. She was like, well, I don't know. So I'll just call you they. they I'll just refer to you as they. And I was like, that's... So you are being transphobic now by re- deliberately ignoring my pronouns. Yeah. And I was a bit like, it just kind of flabbergasted me a little bit because I was like, I don't usually often come across something like that because in most situations I pass and most people just automatically refer mm-hmm. to me as she, her. And obviously that's why I'm getting FFS. That's why I'm having my voice surgery done. That's why I'm having my chest. That's why I've gone on this like 10 year process. Yeah. I'm not saying everyone needs to do that. That's just my journey. And it's... A very strange conversation that's happening now that just seems to almost want to disregard all of my journey because someone read somewhere on Twitter that that's what they should do. And I just feel like, just listen to your surroundings, be aware of the person that you're speaking to and just like be more self-aware. Like, I don't want to automatically offend someone. The problem is, I think what happens is it gets to a stage where people are so scared to offend someone that they end up offending them yeah. because now they're now they also, now they're like they're overthinking it to I a know, stage where yeah, it's like that, oh and I'm just what are to, you oh, oh actually and I'm just about to say something that counteracts my last point because I don't want to be asked my pronouns yeah and that uh, unfortunately I haven't gotten yet to a point in my life where I uh, have a developed nuance internal monologue oh, where I can reconcile those two differences together I don't yeah. have the language yet I don't I haven't gone through the creative process of discovering or creating myself to come up with a good enough answer that I can just easily say to someone like, oh, don't ask me, but just assume. Like, I don't know how yeah. to say that in a way that's yeah. beneficial for me. And maybe if actually anyone in the comments would like to share how they reconcile with it, because I know a couple of trans men who feel exactly the same, like, don't call them they them, just call him he. And it's like, it's it's a very strange, it's an undercurrent of a conversation that is absolutely not important realistically at the moment because the biggest important at the moment is that we even have rights intact anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like it's such a like non-issue really. And I'm not going to be like, how 
today I'm never shopping at BHS again. Like, I'm never going to be like that, but it does kind of make me go like, oh. I call myself a transsexual because I feel like it's a very, it's a very important distinction of a certain journey under the umbrella of transgender. Well, I can relate to it a tiny bit to the stage where like, yes, as I'm not a trans person, but... I've still changed my name. Yes. And when I hear people yes. use my old name, it feels, it feels like I've been punched in the stomach because I don't feeling. want that as me anymore. Yeah. So for you, if someone doesn't call you she, her, it takes you back to a stage where you don't want to be anymore. It because makes you're... me that insecure teenager that yeah, because you really want, can't cope with You life. want people to see you as she, her. Yeah. So when people don't do that, I understand that. So anyone saying, but that's wrong, you should deal with that, is disregarding your feelings completely. Because... And that's transphobic. Yeah. But, but I do not mean any malice by it because it is purely my experience. That I know, you're hardly from. Blair White. <laughs> beast Beast of Bogner isn't she Gosh, She follows me on Twitter I'm like why Why do you follow me Go I away I just I hate you I matched with someone On Hinge the other day And the first thing they said was Do you know Blair White And oh. I was like blocked <laughs> I was like I will never get over her In that podcast Not defending herself When that woman was like You're all pedophile And calling her imbecile. a man And she imbecile. was like But I'm not like the rest of them Imbecile Imbecile That's deeply Deeply she, hateful inside some, Deeply upset wrong. with yourself yeah, There is something you don't, wrong You don't say things like that I'm, Anyway don't. So this is part of the same thing oh. about toxic behavior yes. and i completely agree yes instant gratification in all things politics dating job hunts onboarding at a job texting everything needs to be replied to immediately you oh, always need yeah. to be available and i completely agree like i am born this fall into this myself i'm so impatient now but i think some of that is because of how the society, the society is now and like jobs will constantly be like you need to do this for me all the time whenever i ask you but if you ask anything back no. Ignored. No, no, no. Well, and we like, deal with this specifically with certain types of sponsors sometimes. So, it's like, yeah, they're honestly. like, we need it now, we need it now. And you get back to them and they're like, three days later, like, well, why haven't you, like, we're actually the... The amount of, so I have dealt with many companies who will ask you, a, like, the turnaround of your content is instant, instant, but they won't pay you for, like, months and months and months. There was one recently I worked with, I won't blow the name because what's the point, but, like, yeah. me and Callum both had to email them about eight times each saying, like, where is our payment? Because they were, like, six months overdue. And, and they just weren't paying. They were like, we're gonna get to it, we're gonna get to it. And it was like, what the f*** are you doing? Yeah. But, like, companies do that. And I, even when I worked in retail, they didn't give a shit about you. It was no, like, can you work don't. this extra shift? And if you didn't do it, they're like, how disgusting of you. Yeah. And they'd be so angry at you when, like, you signed a contract that gets these days. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't ask to do that when yeah. I worked when I worked in my last job before going to uh -huh. full time retail. They were like, my my job was like, you start at six, uh, you start at uh, ten, and you end at six. That was yeah. my shifts. And I remember one of the times before I left that job, one of the supervisors was like, but there's no reason why you can't wake up and tweet for us at seven a.m. I'm like, but, but you're not. Being I'm not paid going for it. to do that. Yeah. Like yeah, that's yeah. not what my that yeah. that. But that's been so normalized now in society where it's like this. The companies really expect you to die for them, especially when um the People running the business are a bit older from an older yeah, generation where they yeah. expect your soul in return yeah, for money. Yeah. No. And also, you know, toxic behavior has been normalized. It's like people giving out opinions when there's literally no zero, zero reason for it. Zero uh, reason for it. The and weird like, even, like, why don't we listen to experts anymore? Biz bizarre. Why bizarre. is it like someone who, with no education about a topic is allowed just as much of a platform as someone who spent 20 years of their life I had, it? E this, and this is like trivial, but I... But I've just had tattoos done. So I've, a lot of my t-shirts, I've, I've, I've had, I've had like, I've cut t-shirts out so I can let them breathe because I don't want my, my skin being yeah. touched by the, the, the fabric. I've clearly just done this myself. This yeah. is not like, I've just cut it just to let it breathe. And I had someone in my, my DMs the other day, like, um, why on earth would you buy a t-shirt like that? The cut is disgusting. And it was like, First of all, you ugly it, bitch. Like, first of all, like, why does it matter? Oh, like, yeah. apps whatsoever. But also, like, it's clearly, like, this is clearly why I've done it. Yeah. Like, or we'll just ask. I, don't, like, I, I don't... just know. You could say, oh, I've noticed that the cut of your t-shirt is a bit different. Why? But why the is thing that? is, it was, easily it was so, it's so, irre like, I was just tweeting about how, I was just posting a photo about how my next video is coming out today. Mm -hmm. It was so irrelevant to what was even, yeah. was like, like, there was zero reason it's for you weird, to say that. It? But it happens so much now, especially because of like conspiracy theories and stuff. You know, people will just like tell you things they hate about you for no, no reason. reason. Yeah. Like it's so weird, but it's so normal now. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, I think it's because people have gotten to the point now where like I'm, I'm very much of the opinion that like you can share 
little inner workings and inner thoughts that maybe you wouldn't share on the internet with like close friends that you might yes. be like, you know, I know that this is a problematic opinion or whatever, and you can just share e- it with a everybody friend. Everybody bitches, everybody, everybody talks has shit. We, moment everyone does it like, with their friends. Exactly. There is you so if you say you don't do it, you're lying. But there is because people are chronically online now, they can't tell the difference between saying that to a friend and saying that to someone online. Saying to a person, yeah. Saying it's it to off, someone yeah. online. So for example, when I unveiled my first, my my new tattoo and I, I showed like this part and stuff, someone was like Oh my god, that took seven hours. My tattoo artist could have done it in one. And I was like, that's because we spent four hours drawing to make sure that it was freehand and I really liked but it. But also, also, then your I've tattoo artist is a shit. Yeah, if they're I've gonna do to that one, one of the hour. best in London. And it's like, why did you say that? Why didn't you say, oh, there was my, no reason for it? There's yeah. no reason to start, like, what, do you want me to comment back and be like, oh my god, please tell me I'm suffering lied to? The only thing that I can say is, like, Unless someone is doing something that's harming other people and like yeah. they're actually actively doing dangerous activities, shut up. Like there's there's <laughs> there's literally no there's no reason. Shut up. But I mean also we 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 fall into it a tiny bit when it comes to, you know, not necessarily problematic things when it comes to being offensive, but like People are so intensely now on like getting the views or the, po- the you know the the popularity instantly. Yeah. So TikTok is a huge thing about this, yeah. where like there are so many people who suddenly think they're celebrities because they've suddenly gained a massive following so quickly. Yeah. But if you gain something so fast like that, it's not it a good go. thing. It's not a good thing because with TikTok as well, is if you are new to TikTok in within like a week or two weeks, you suddenly mm. have a million followers. That's happening to so many other people as well. Yeah. Where it's going to be recycled so quickly within a year, that won't mean yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's become so normal to want that instant gratification of the like am- views right now. And the amount right now. of people that say to me, um, even people that I meet like in my life, they're like, oh, you do YouTube. I, w- I really want to get into that. I don't know what to make for my content though. I'm like, if you don't have a basic idea, yeah. since I've done this for 16 years and I've only just started to get some level of success that I'm pretty happy with. Like, well, you want me to give you 16 years of secrets like that? And you don't even think about what your content could be. Yeah. No. It's the same as when people become famous because their friend is big or their uh, you know, they, they some, someone shouts strange. them out, and it's like I'm, I'm not gonna. She's a wobbly woman. It's, it's I'm not gonna name people, but like I've known many people who have suddenly had instant success because they've been friends with like massive YouTubers, mm. and like they don't learn how to first of all deal with the celebrity status, yeah. uh, or like deal with the mass people watching them, and also, but they've never le- they don't they've not learned how to how to be a YouTuber, how yeah. to edit videos, how to so like they become stale very quickly I, yeah because... i'm not saying you have to pay your dues but you have to be aware of what you have to be aware you and like into. you know if you if you don't have an understanding you will fizzle out very quickly every single career on this planet needs training yeah everything needs hours training. had very long and <laughs> adaption adaption but what, what? i need gag <laughs> sorry what? Beca- <laughs> so also sorry it's just, i just don't remember we're not we won't name who they are but those two people who were at the event that we were at and they they had got big on tiktok and it was very quick and they were suddenly going we need a bodyguard to walk around because ah! we're gonna get mobbed ah! and it was this sudden ego they had because they yeah. got boost and it was like you're you're not you wanted a bodyguard to go to the party that all the event people are going to like your not, industry not, peers not, are yeah at. not like the fans of your content or the fans of like who are going to this event but you're going to like an event space where only the people who have been invited by this event is going and you're demanding a bodyguard because you've had such success so quick Diva. that you have this like sudden ego that you're this like massive celebrity and who's going to get mobbed ironically we didn't see them at the next one didn't even didn't see, them. see them there so instantly forgotten moved on nobody cares this one is called what if earth is like one of those uncontacted tribes in South America like the whole galaxy knows we're here but they've just agreed not to contact us until we figure it out for ourselves how does it, doesn't that give you like a feeling of dread I have a huge 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 love for space and yes. love for um other like galaxies and everything and it, it, we cannot be the only th- people in the known universe exactly and i think also when it comes to that specific question because the universe is so vast we cannot categorically say that that is not the case exactly i feel like there's more chance of it actually happening than not happening so there is a concept known as prison planet have you heard about this no so (laughs) that's scary Prison planet is that we have been exiled from somewhere and we have been blacklisted i know literally it's very twitter isn't it it is yes cancelled we were cancelled yeah blocked do not contact like send no one lives here send return to sender very that with us and that's why no one has contacted us 
That because sounds terrifying. Are, you know, a prison planet. We were put here to punish our species. But there's also that um, I don't know what I don't, I don't know the exact name of it, but uh, it's like the method of how humans came into being. The the amount of hurdles that has to happen in order for us to be here. And the okay. tiny tiny percentage. I you were talk about Fermi paradox. But I think but this is I think this is what I'm talking is this about. What it is? Where yeah. like you, it, it needs to jump over these hurdles in order to make humans. And there's like one hurdle that makes it go into like bacteria and then there's another huge hurdle that they have to overcome to become the next form of evolution and it gets to a stage where it's so tiny the chance of we being here yeah. that we're the one tiny percentage that's actually managed to get over this final hurdle to yeah. become these sort of sentient beings yeah so there might be other planets that have like amoebas and stuff but to get that to be us yeah, exactly. is so minimal that mm-hmm. we're like one of the tiny tiny percentage that's managed to do it i think also what Very much leading on from that, I think a huge problem that human beings actually have to understand is the concept of random. Yeah. Like, you can say, like, yeah, I understand random, but you can't just say, like, think of a random Uh colour. Because that doesn't, like, if you think of a random colour out of every single colour that exists in the universe, you can only ever pull from what you know. Yeah. It's not actually truly random. Yeah. And I think this is why we look at, Pat- humans look at patterns to be like oh we're here because of divine intervention or we're here because of e- like purely evol- evolution and luck and it's like it could just be completely random yeah and the the idea then of like if it's completely random for us how much more random could it be for something oh, else somewhere yeah, else yeah yeah and definitely. does that mean that then because it's so random could we genuinely be the only ones. Oh, isn't it nasty? But also, like you it. you could even go into it further than that and actually be like, well, so I'm burping. If we were like unsubscribe, if we were some kind of simulation in actuality, these other galaxies and planets don't outside of our solar system don't even exist. It's one of those things as well. Like, so we could say we're the only ones here, but actually, we could we could actually be the simulation. Therefore, what, like what, something else controls us. Okay, so what is more terrifying to you, the idea that we are completely and utterly alone, or the idea that we aren't? What's more like <gasps> the, To me it scares me more That we are alone Really? Yeah that's more terrifying to so me So going on from that Do you think it's more alarming then To maybe be We could be the first The very very first species To ever get to this level Yeah Or we could be the last Oh I don't know Isn't that, isn't that nasty The idea yeah. that we're technically At the end of time Yeah like, Because imagine. I remember I remember reading like uh, It was uh, well, not reading, I watched a video about it a little while ago About how there were theories That about originally That Mars was already Like a planet For people to live on And like we escaped well, The planet Well it had an atmosphere oh, yeah. yes And I we like this. escaped the planet And came to Earth because, In a meteor So like Mars was the original uh, home. And like, so that civilization, that species, that everything has been completely wiped out. And we're like the second generation of it. So like, although we think about, oh, we can go to Mars now and try to like, you know, acclimatize it and make it. But like, it's scary to think actually, well, that already had it. And we're the second one of it. The one thing that does kind of get me about Mars that I see constantly now, especially with someone like, elongated muskrat on Twitter being like, we want to get to Mars, terraform Mars, like Earth is dying. It's like, if you can terraform such a harsh planet that wants you all dead the second you get there, you can re-terraform a planet that's already your home. That's the thing, isn't it? It's, that's I tea. I genuinely believe people like him who want to go there is because he wants to be a god. Yeah. Oh, he wants yes, to, god he complex. Wa- he wants to be the, the overlord one. of the, the planet. I yeah. think that's what it is. And I think that's where it comes from. I don't think it's about, oh, we want to terraform the planet to make, to make a nice new home. It's all selfish. Absolutely. It's all about, I want to be the overlord of this country. I want to be the overlord of this cu- world. I want, like, that's, I, to me, that's how I see it. I don't see it as I'm trying to save us. So this says, a new day app has launched instead of photos of a person it shows you photos of their bedroom car kitchen shoes how they have their tea slash coffee things like that what photo would tell you the most about someone and would you be interested to see to, if you would choose a, like a potential date Ooh. i think that's really because <sighs> i think someone's bedroom really does tell you a lot about who they are as a person um, because I think I would agree with that. If you would look into, if you look into my bedroom, you would think I feel like you would think I'm quite a colourful person who likes horror because there's yeah. lots of like dark things in my room. There's lots of like evil stuff, but it's full of like colour. There's loads of yeah. neon lights. Yeah, there's yeah. Funko Pops. So you know, I feel like you would see that I'm quite like a a nerdy gothy. You definitely wear your like 
I was gonna say wear your heart on your sleeve, but that doesn't really count. Like you very much decorate your area how you are. Yes, I feel if like you... I feel like this is a big window into my personality yeah. very much. If you looked at my bedroom, you would not know that I lived there. Would you not? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, well, now you would. Apart it's because, because there's, a, there's a dead body. A dead body. <laughs> yeah. No, that would let you know that I lived there. Yeah, it would. No. So the only thing that really represents me in my bedroom at the moment is my old. Uh, fluffy lamps that I used to have in the background of my videos. They're yeah. like, they've been relegated to my bedroom as the bedroom lamps. And my new giant mirror that I bought with the like gothic around the outside. Yeah. But like my bed is not styled. It's just literally just like white sheets. I mean, my bed frame is just black. Like I've got no artwork, no nothing. But when I do move, I, I am going to be decorating it with yes. Lucifer. So. <laughs> so it says things here like uh, uh, it shows you what kind of person, like their bedroom, their car, their kitchen, their shoes. Like oh, what about anything? Yeah. If, if you were to see your shoes, I feel like that would that would be, like if you had a photo you, of your yeah. shoes, you would instantly go, okay, I know exactly I know, who she yeah, is. Yeah, I know who, who this woman is. Yeah. yeah. If you saw my shoe collection, yeah, okay. Okay. I in, or my battle station. Yes. If you saw my battle station, which is a a phrase in the gaming world uh, of your like computer area, basically, you would be like, "This bitch is a streamer." <laughs> yes. But I think is as well though. Like as much as I love the idea of this, it's like, quite quite fun to work it out. If I don't see you first, I need to know. Like, I need to know who I'm meeting. That's like yeah. that's like I'm gonna get killed territory. It's very, like blind dates never really work. Do no, they? no. I wouldn't want to go on a blind date. Because... I, I just feel really uncomfortable because yeah. it's not even because you wouldn't find them attractive. To me, it's just the anxiety of not knowing who is gonna suddenly start talking to you because like in a, as a Londoner as well, who is yeah. very much like keeps yourself to yourself, yeah, don't yeah, talk yeah, to yeah, strangers. Yeah, yeah. The idea that some Stranger random danger. person you've never seen just comes up to you and goes, I'm, I'm on a date with you. A red vest yeah no that's terrifying but I, I do think i just Breast. sort of going on this i do think you can tell a lot about who they are if you look at their things yeah uh i would say things are all, almost more important than rooms because like in some cases in london like if you live in a furnished place like you you're like you're kind of stuck with whatever they've given that's you. true that's true but, but, but people's things clothes is a really important i feel like shoes are a dead giveaway as well like your shoe collection is very reminiscent of who you are Multicolors. You've got Simpsons. Um, um, yeah, am you I would... doxing you right now? <laughs> <laughs> you would know exactly. It's like you would know that I'm a huge Simpsons fan if you just saw my Simpsons shoes collection because I have so many. And you would know that I'm a massive slut. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All she has is like stripper twelve nine. inch yeah. stripper heels. <laughs> I want to know from a partner that you're a bit clean. Yeah. Like I don't want it. Like if I look in all your house and it's just literally just like shit everywhere yeah i'm like do i want to invite that into my life yeah because exactly. i i i mean i'm not exactly 100 percent clean but i'm not dirty and i think there's a there's a difference between someone's having a bit of a mess somewhere and you're cleaning up but like yeah if you can see where there's like dirt like that to me that's from like i don't like if I your kitchen care. floor has like stains all over it i'm like i don't think i want to invite someone who yeah. doesn't want to keep some kind of like hygiene level. Yeah. If there's a fish in the bottom of the ocean that can be like, to attract a mate, I'm going to make a ring of stones and just tidy up the area. Yeah. If there is a fish at the bottom of the sea that can do that, you can do that for me. That's the thing, because I think this is the thing, like, keep... <laughs> and that's the bare minimum. Yeah. minimum. And I think this is I'm the thing, it, it, it's... it's... Keeping yourself clean is like one of the most basic things a human learns to do when you're younger. I think also I... it's it very much related to like, Queer activities, yes, should we say? That. You need to have a level of hygiene. I mean, unless yes, you're into that. that, then you do you. But I'm, I'm not sis. Thanks for that. No sis, <laughs> it's, it's Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Time to get. <laughs> don't just discuss. Don't say things like that. Straight men of Reddit. What is the strangest thing you have been told not to do because that's gay? Oh, I've got a similar one to this, but a bit different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, this I've, I've, I've screenshot a couple of them. So this is so insane. Is it? So this person has commented sunscreen. Got one of my friend. Got one of my friends saying that sunscreen is gay. The UVI was at eleven that day. That's <gasps> so high. Yes, and then someone's replied, "Nothing more manly than skin cancer." Like, you, can you imagine but, saying to someone putting on sunscreen is gay? But I totally yeah, believe yeah, it. Yeah, totally believe it. Lad culture is very like you can't do anything ever because mm -hmm. that's gay. I, I mean, I've heard many times of people saying that like uh, their boyfriends or their friends who are straight men like won't get like fruity drinks because it's like seen as gay. It's like, but they're the most delicious That's ones. That's the point. Why are you just like poison? If you're going to poison yourself with alcohol, make it at least taste nice. Do, yeah, especially Have like, you ever had beer? Oh, it's oh, disgusting. It's vile. vile. It's just like drinking like, I don't know, blended bread and yeah. yeast and like, being like, oh, what a delicious. When they're like, this fruity IPA. No, this is beer. It's so <clears> stupid, <throat> isn't it? Why would you, why would you, why would you um, do that to like, yeah, why? It's, I mean, it's, it's homophobic. It goes it's back to homophobia. homophobia. Like, why do you care so much of someone thinking that you're gay? Why it's, does it bother you that much that you won't order a 
like a, a fruity drink or a Lit- cocktail. A passion fruit martini. And like, you're like, no, if you, if, guy. You, if you are a straight person in the audience, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> or if you are a girlfriend or a boyfriend of a straight person and they are like, and your partner is like, no. Like just to convince them to try a porn star martini. Yeah. They will. Can I say that on YouTube? Porn star? Well, passion yeah, fruit it's martini. It's fine. Well, it's, hard, it's, because, it's 35 minutes in. So well, there fine. we go. Because you, like, even if you just have that little tiny piece Keep of freedom, talking. your entire life is going to change for the best thing you've ever had. Just from that one little cocktail, do you know? Dyeing your hair. Gay. Dyeing your hair. Well, getting more than one earlobe piercing on the other gay. side was gay. Getting any mo- getting piercings at all. Gay. Yeah. Wearing also- any jewellery. Gay. Wearing any clothes. Gay. <laughs> Wearing anything. Gay. Back in my bartender days, I asked a man if he wanted to see a dessert menu. He said, if I wanted a dessert, I'd order wings like a real man. You won't even have a dessert. I've, I think as I've heard this a couple times before, people saying their boyfriends won't have dessert. Is it because dessert. dessert sounds French? And they're like, I don't uh, know. Gay. I don't know. <laughs> the thing is, it, it, it's, it's toxic masculinity. You won't even have vibe. like a dessert because it's gay. Men are so fragile and, and they, honest, so they honestly go on about how like toxic masculinity isn't a thing or like how weird the special snowflakes and they freak out because they want dessert. Anyone that's ever used that as a legitimate insult being like, you're just a snowflake is the most like ridiculously fragile person you will ever that's meet. That's the thing. So the snowflakes who call people snowflakes are always the snowflakes. Also, what's bad about being a snowflake? Unique doesn't happen very often and you look gorgeous. And yep. even if it is temporary, it's still beautiful. Well, it's jealousy, isn't it? Because they don't stand out. They don't, and they, they never don't. will. And they never will. And they're completely forgetful. I never really used to get told that... Oh, no, actually, there was one time that Scott, in my humanities class, I had black nail polish on, um, obviously. Q, Scott! Spoiler alert, I was... Oh, he was so hot, and I was a bit like, you can tell me that all you want. But he was like, I remember I had black nail polish on, and he just leant over to me, and he went, that's a bit far, that. That's a bit gay. But he, was, he said it kind of quietly, and I was a bit like... <gasps> Make out with me, Scott. <laughs> I, I have a similar thing when it comes to my work. So when I used to work in retail, uh, I used to wear black nail varnish nail varnish as well. Oh, she's a gothic. And the amount of stares I would get from people, like because I was a guy who was wearing black nail varnish. Yeah. But I remember one one customer came up to me and said, "It's not Halloween anymore." First of all, look at me. I'm a bald man with like yeah. eighty piercings all over my face, and you're you're weird about my nail varnish. Weird. People are so strange about little things like that. Aren't yeah. They? Anytime that you dress like slightly alternative around Halloween, people are just like. Uh, 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 uh. And it's like, oh, wow, Welcome you're so Welcome to unique. Earth Sounds of Luxaria. <laughs> Sorry, that was... <laughs> but they sound like that. Like, yeah, I'm so over laddish Like that blokey the lad, they do sound they're like, like they're, they're having like, they some kind of seizure. Chance, I'm like, this is... Like the just end. The sap, this is the end. No, you know when you hear just football, like football fans like, around, and they just yeah. have that like same. You could take anyone from anywhere in the UK, and they would just all have that. No, same I agree. I completely agree. Like, completely uh, agree. Uh, 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 I always wonder uh, about like. Uh, I wonder about football chants because like everyone seems to know what what to How say. Do you know? Where did you learn all this? Wait, yes, mind you, it's like children's cultural songs, isn't it? When you do like patty cake, patty cake. When did you learn Baker's that? Because. <laughs> <laughs> Demon. <laughs> Here is another one that, because you said earlier, feminine lady on the game as a child. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just realised. Yes, I'm, I'm. I'm a child posse. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. And you talk about me being demonetised. Said... <laughs> this one's gone off the rails. Jesus. <laughs> Women of Reddit, what's something every girl should know, but it is rarely taught? So we have here. Strategies for def- for financial independence, self-defense, and self-love, and assertive communication. Yep. Now, I think every single human being that's an adult should have those qualities, regardless yeah. of which gender you are. You should be aware of where your money is coming from, aware of how much money you have, maybe also a trajectory to make more if you need it. Yes. But self-defense is such a huge thing. So, I don't know if you know this about me. I don't know, but you've been told that I've Syria has a black gout. belt of gout. I was just about to say I've got a mm. black belt. So, I've got a black belt in karate, and I grew up doing doing martial arts in I don't, so I, I don't know how my parents decided to put me in for this I don't know I don't remember the conversations that happened around it but they were they just knew like, you were gonna have a hard life I th- maybe that's the case so self-defense I'm a huge 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 proponent now because I've been in some situations in my life where I should have used my self-defense training unfortunately in one or two of those times I've been a bit fuzzled and not really been able to like locate the appropriate survival instinct is there anything that you would have liked to have learned as a feminine child on the game <laughs> that uh, would have helped uh, you in that sort of like that it's okay to be feminine 
Oh my god, that's probably the most important like, thing. Like I, I was it? told my entire life as a gay man, it was like, no, you cannot be feminine because being known as a woman or being feminine is disgusting. It's seen as a step down on yeah, the ladder, isn't definitely, it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's the thing. Like, Shocking. unfortunately, we live in a society still to this day where white masculine men are on the top of the ladder. Yeah. And like, it, as the more feminine you go, the more sort of like cultural cultural difference, you get lower, lower down mm -hmm. the ladder and you, mm -hmm. the, you know, more discrimination happens and stuff. I was very lucky that my grandparents were not really misogynistic at all. Uh, See that, I find that quite unusual because yes. they're from a generation in which that was like, Normal. Yeah. Like and my, heavily normalized. I adored my grandmother and I think she could see that I was, you know, puffy. I know. Uh, so it wasn't really any kind of real issue between us. My granddad took a little bit more time to understand it, but he was never, he never once in his life discriminated against me. Wow. He was always one. But his brother, I, I could say the same. His brother was called George. So he would have been my great uncle. He was disgusting. Was like, vi when I. I think I might have told, I think I told this a long time ago to, I'm not sure to you, but I came out to my granddad technically through an argument with his brother, George. Oh. Um, so I, I'm, I don't know if I know this story. So we were, my granddad, George would come over maybe once a month. And every yeah. time he came over, he would always ask about girls. He would always, like, yeah. he was one of those men that would be like, why well, haven't you got a girlfriend yet? Where's the girl? Where, he was very like, he, he reminded me a bit, it was a bit, it felt like a bit weird how yeah. it was the obsession. Yeah. He was in the, he was in the uh, living room once talking to my granddad and I was 20 at this, 20, maybe 19. So you were an adult. I, yeah, I was point. like an adult. an adult. I had already come out to my friends and like my family all knew and everything at this point, but he was one of the people that I was like, I'm not even going to bother even telling. I don't care about him. If he yeah. died right now, I wouldn't care. Like yeah. he's not someone in my life. I didn't realize he was there. So I sort of went to the door and I realized and went back and my granddad spotted me. Aww. And I was my granddad doesn't know the situation. Cause at this point I hadn't actually told my granddad yet. Cause I was like, I just, I don't you think don't I need to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I walked in and I was like, sorry, I'm on the phone to my friend. I can't really stop. Um, just hello. Aww. And instantly, oh, yeah. instantly him being the male obsessed girlfriend. Oh, what's her name then? And it was just like, why is that the first thing coming to her now? Yeah. And then I'm on yeah, my phone yeah. to someone. And I was like, oh, it's not a girl, it's just one of my friends. And he was like, oh, is it a man? And I was like, yeah, yes. He was like, "Oh, are you one of them then?" And like oh, flicked his wrist. God's First sake. of all, like, why what is a why, jump in, like, why is me having a guy as a friend? Like most, of, like men normally have male friends and girls normally hang with girls. That's just kind of how usually how it usually happens in schools and like friendships. So I don't know why he instantly jumped to, "Are you gay?" I feel like he was wanted to ask that already. Yeah, but I feel like that was a huge. charged question. Um, I said yes. He then said I was disgusting. He said I was vile. I was a discriminate. I just uh, disgusting things to the family. I was a disgrace. And I kind of like just erupted to him like so viciously saying like you like you're an absolute disgusting human being because he oh he, did, he did the, he did the classic thing of like uh oh just because you've not found the right girl yet you haven't found, i was oh. like well you haven't found the right guy yet have you and yeah. i was like people kill themselves because of people like you yeah and i'm so sick of you coming into my oh. house and making me feel uncomfortable about who i am as a person because your constant assumptions about my sexuality and my granddad was sort of sitting there like uh, what's happening? Oh my god! Um, but I came out to him. I came out to my granddad through an argument with his brother. That is but like, so rough. But that was that was he was one of those people as as I was growing up who would make me feel shitty about being feminine. Definitely sounds like one of those people that you have in the family that always makes you feel just on edge, and you're just like, I don't want to be near you yep. or talk to you or anything. Absolutely. And I don't understand how most of the time these people don't seem to be aware that they're doing it. They're always like, No, I'm right. <laughs> it's it's narcissism. <clears throat> Completely narcissistic personality. Yeah. Okay, so someone has put in the comments here, which I actually feel is very, very important. And this is something that even I find still difficult to do now is it's okay to be rude to someone if they won't leave you alone. You don't owe anyone It's your not time called rudeness. Energy. At that point, it's not quite even called rudeness. They're called, they're, it's called defending yourself because yeah. they're rude by not it's... picking up on the social cues of like, do not speak to me. I think this fits into one of the earlier things about life advice. Like, but like when people say like, oh, respect your elders. If you're not going to respect me, I'm not going to respect you. Yeah. I don't give a shit who you are respect should be the default from both parties yeah and then it easily is revoked as yeah. soon as somebody decides to spit on that you could, just because you're old doesn't give you the right to be an asshole to someone because Literally. you're because you're unrespect your elders no if you're gonna be an arsehole i'm not gonna be like oh, it's live fine. with your consequences of your actions exactly Absolutely. i completely agree with this comment and if there is anyone that feels pressurized by like someone being 
like overtly interested in them and you just interested in you and you are not interested uh-huh. in them, you are more than allowed to be like, no, stop talking to me. No, exactly. I don't want to be in this situation yeah. anymore. When, especially when it comes to like dating and stuff, people get too, people can put, put their emotions too much into people too quickly. Well, where I had a situation a, recently, didn't yeah, I? Where and it, it was just so intense. And, and it's I was like, like, I can't do that. It's not rude of you to suddenly cut off communication. It's a self-preservation thing. You need yeah. to do this because it's not. this isn't going to lead down a nice path. Oh, you know, what happened to me with yes like i had i had to I get to a point where i was like this is enough this it's, is too much and, and there has you know, to be a point in and which you authority, authorities me. needed to step in because i couldn't this is not me being rude or not trying it's just like i can't deal with this anymore Absolutely. like you need consequences for what you've been doing mm-hmm. and it's not rude it's just it's self-preservation it's, yeah that and is it, a great way of looking at it no because also if you end up like seeing someone and they constantly push past your boundaries and you haven't said no they will not see your boundaries as a line they will see them as an invitation yeah to go further and further and further yeah. until there is nothing left of you yeah so very 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 good point it is okay to be rude to someone who will recognize not the signs and cut that shit quick i feel like this is also something that we can say because we're slightly older as well yes. i feel like when i was a teenager I would not have listened to that. I would have been like, no, they love me. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, you, you ugly bitch. <laughs> well, I, I've been in situations when I was younger as as a gay person and been preyed on by um, other men who have definitely used that to advantage and made me do things I've not wanted to do. Absol- I've absolutely been groomed on the internet. Yeah, yeah. As a, as a teenager, I was absolutely groomed on the internet. And I think it is ludicrous. This one is, what is the dumbest thing someone has ever told you? I've got plenty of them, my loves. Plenty of them. <sighs> what I'm going to do is read a couple of comments and just try and like lure. Some <laughs> You're trying out. to goad me. Yeah. So, are you ready to hear this? I quite like this. <laughs> I one. don't know if I am, to be honest. Cold pizza is healthier because it's not greasy. The thing is, I can understand actually the the. <sighs> I don't, obviously I don't agree because it's just ludicrous. Yeah. But I can understand actually how some people might think, think that, that because actually a lot of the time when you microwave or you reheat something or something, something like that, you it, it gets wet. Yeah. And it's just because the fat melts and it becomes yes, liquidy. that is exactly it. So there's lipids. Lipids are the things that are like, they're made of triglycerides and there are several different forms. Depending on the bonds that they have, depends if they are solid, which we know as fat, or liquid at room temperature, which we know as oil. Yeah. Now, when you get cold pizza, when you get cooked pizza, covered in like fat from cheese and oil and like olive oil and blah, 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 your fillings, whatever, you get meat and vegetables, whatever. So it will be, it will have like a layer of like warm fat, basically. But when that gets cold, that solidifies. So yeah, that is yeah, a, that yeah. is fat. So at room fat, th- fat. And then when you <laughs> So the idea that there are people out there thinking cold pizza is healthier because yeah. it's not greasy. Like I under- I understand why you would think that somehow, but also use but your brain the, for two yeah, seconds. Yeah, where like, where do you think the grease goes? Yeah. I mean, this is one what children would say, like if you swallow a seed, a tree grows inside your stomach. Or do you remember like chewing gum seven years? Seven years yeah, seven years to digest if you drink uh, drink chewing gum. If you, if you drink eat, chewing gum. If you uh swallow chewing gum, it's like it takes that long to get out of your system. I had in my mind when I was a child that there was like this rib cage just like full of chewing gum. Yeah, it's disgusting, isn't it? And then trees as well. Trees. But there was actually, do you remember that story? There was um, some like hiking person accidentally got hit in the face by a tree. Um, and like a seed went like up his nose. And then a, like a... He had like pain in his lung and there was a tree growing in his lung. Dis- a- I don't want to hear that story. We are going to watch a YouTube video on that later. That's that horrific. Shocking. So something that kind of like is probably the most dumbest thing that I can pull to my mind right now is that when I was a teenager, I think it was about 13, we just got Google on the home computer. Now, can you imagine saying that? I I used to use Ask Jeeves for a long time. Yes, you were disgusting. So, you know, in the search bar at the top, you can just type in like, I don't know, what does gout? (laughs) And like, it will come up with a response. I remember my dad being like, um, I don't know how to look for something. Teach me how to use a search engine. And I went to type in the search bar and he went ballistic. He was like, you don't change the default. You're going to ruin the computer. You don't change the default. And I was like, this was zero to a hundred. And I was like, <gasps> what's happening? That's one of my, do you know, that's one of, actually one of my biggest fears. Becoming so out of touch that you act like that. Yeah. Over the most normal things literally and it was uh it was like i joke about it now with him and he swears he doesn't remember but i'm sure that he does but i just those sorts of things where it's like if you're asking me for advice about or showing you how to do something you ask me to do it and i am showing you don't immediately lose your head about it because yeah it's yeah ludicrous absolutely ludicrous it's the it's the 
it's a, the stage of ignorance where it's like, what happened? Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> the stage of ignorance. What happened to you to make you this way? I it, mean, YouTube comments can be ripe with oh stupidity. Like the, the most unhinged opinions that don't make any sense. <laughs> what is it about YouTube comments as well that? Uh, like I swear that no other platform has them as bad. But also, it's like stupid people think things are insulting. Like when people say to me all the time, I had one, I had one the other day. Um, getting a, one of my reaction videos, going, yeah, but you're bold, so be quiet. And it was like, but I love being bold. Literally. At what point have I ever made a comment that I don't like being bold? Like it's not offensive. I do also wonder how sometimes people think that going onto somebody else's page and typing hate won't get them like. Reprimanded in any way, shape. Yeah. They're like, it's, my, it's a free country. It's like the whole world is not just America, and yeah. you're online. Well, I think that's a lot of. I think, uh, unfortunately, like so much the America fans, but so many uh, Americans kind of grew up to be told that they're number one in the world. Yeah, and like every single thing is about America. Yeah. So when we've done like Brit- British reactions and stuff, sometimes there is like, uh, not always, but sometimes there's someone in the comments who has like a very explicitly American understanding of the world. Yeah. And it's just like, they'll say something and be like, I can't believe they can do that. And it's like, well, it's because this isn't America. That's why. To me, it's, it's guns. To thing. me, it's guns. guns yeah. I will never, un- I will never, never understand. understand guns. But like even people who are liberal in um, America love guns. Yeah. Like it's not even like a, a, a political stance. It's like, it's a lifestyle. I, I, you know, I've it? I've tweeted many times about guns, about in. I mean, I've had many followers being like, but it it's not this that does it. It's people that kill people, not guns and all stuff. It's like, and then they try to compare it with other countries and about. But you, the only countries that have guns are America. Yeah, and it's like or owned by America, and it's like I don't get how you can look. Well, people get people with this knife crime in London. Yeah, but <laughs> you you can't kill mass people with a single knife. Yeah, like there's mass shootings where like. So many people die, and it yeah. happens all the time. Like the one that recently happened in New York, that oh only just my happened. Goodness. And like, it sounds awful to say this, but when I hear when I hear, it, I'm like, of course it's America. Of course, like yeah. that's oh, my you response. Don't hear about it happening as anywhere awful else, as it is, like, it's become so normal to hear about shooting. To have more, to, more than one mass shooting the, a day. But Americans and guns, it really terrifies me. Isn't I am it? so glad that we do not live in a gun country. Yeah, I I could not even too. fathom. Like even even visiting America. The idea that someone yeah, can just have a we, gun well, on them. Yeah, well, we're planning on going to America at some point within the next like few years to have like mm-hmm. our lovely little adventure time. Yeah, this is just kind of like a nice one to end on. Um, it says, with all the negative headlines dominating the news these days, it can be difficult to spot signs of progress. What makes you optimistic about the future? Luxair is moving here. Oh, yeah. Yes. So well, that's not positive in the news. I suppose this is the news. It, well, I meant just in our lives. Like, yeah. what's going to happen nice in oh, our lives? What what's okay, happening in our? So that's we, why I wanted yeah, to end yeah. on this one because oh, I was well, like, I've got loads of stuff happening in the next couple of months. So yeah, so time of my we life. have been trying to get Luxera to live near us for such a long time. Yeah, and um, the stars just just did they not did, align. They did for not that. align for that. Um, and then they did. And then they did. And so we are so excited that uh, Luxera, we're going to be neighbors. Literally neighbors. We'll be able to see each other every day. We're going to be making um the podcast far more frequent yeah far more um, frequent. so it will no longer just be once a month which is really really exciting we're going to try for fortnightly we could just try yeah, once we'll to begin see. with we'll, we'll see. see but it just means that we'll see we'll, we'll see girls. but it just means obviously we'll be able to film so much easier our collabs will be so much better we'll have you know so much more time to i just, just can't wait to just be able to be like your so like for example in the mornings when i get ready to come here i listen to loud hard style music just to like yeah. get me going i could just be like do you want to come downstairs whilst i'm getting ready we just have a little party yeah and then literally we come upstairs to film like yeah. how easy it's is gonna, that be gonna be so be? much fun so good. It's, and we'll be able to do streams so much more together yes, exactly. it's just so that's really exciting i'm um, like i feel like in my life i'm you know i'm my exciting thing i'm starting my tattoo journey which is filling so. filling me up with so much joy isn't it exciting and i the, almost feel like do you, do you have, have you had the moment yet where you're like Fully naked in the mirror and going like, I feel like I'm still wearing something that's gorgeous. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's so still, good. Yeah, it's so good. I love that. Um, and also because you know I've got a new camera, but like all the, it just feels like at the moment I'm having a lot of happy things happening, which yeah. is really nice, especially after uh COVID and stuff and not being and able to do so much stuff years. and stressful, especially yeah because some of the things I've had to go through recently, like it just feels so relatable. <laughs> it feels nice to be able to have some like really happy things going on, and mm. I just I just I'm 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 starting to like love life again after the horrific time I was put through. Um, it's so I kind of I can really like relate to that. I think I've got some personal very intense journeys coming yep, up for me actually yep. like i don't know what's happened to me but it's like nothing has happened for years and then this year in the last three months like 
four or five massive life-changing events yep. have been planned and are taking place right now. So literally in one month and three days, we leave to film my documentary for me getting facial feminization surgery yes! in Spain. And I am fully... I'm so ready for it, but it's also such a massive thing because the week before I'm moving, <laughs> the week yes. before I am moving. And then I'm just like, I'm going to have to like settle in and be all like, I'm going to look like a red onion for like a month. I keep saying this, but I'm just going to look so terrible before I start to look better. <laughs> and I'm so glad I'm able to move near us because my mental health is going to take a complete nosedive. And mm -hmm. it's going to be lovely to be able to just like chill out and do absolute nonsense. Yeah. And laugh at dog videos and then like eaten by an escalator part three. Eaten by an escalator. Get gout. When parking meters attack. Exactly. <laughs> exactly that. So I just is there's so many exciting things coming up from this year. I mean, like, I've got several other surgeries planned for this year as well. Yeah. So we have a lot of fun little trips coming. We're going to Birmingham to go to an event. We've yes, got, we are. You know, That's go, actually quite soon. We're going to an event called Kidstock as well, which is a big hardstyle hardcore event up in. I think is that October? October? No, ju end of July. End of July, and that one that's the, like near Newcastle. Yeah, that's it? quite high up north. And then we've got something. We've got having like a Halloween event that we're going to Sinistry and Slime Light. It Italy so in July it's, for the it's, Craig Escape. Yep, I'm going to Iceland. Iceland. Um, uh, I think we're going to go. We're going Finland towards the end of the year again to go Ooh. see the Aurora Borealis. You're coming oh. with us. You said you. I gonna... would love yeah. to. I would love uh, to. We need to organise that. Actually. It just. I just. I don't know. There's lots of things Aurora. happening. I would love to see the Aurora Borealis. Mm -hmm. So gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Gorgina um, girls. I just. I don't know. I'm just. I just like to think that now. This is, it's just nice to have a few positive things happening and it's not always about like horrible stuff. I know obviously there's so much horrible stuff going on in the world and I'm not trying to detract from any of that, but sometimes you have to like. I feel like there's the, two things can be true at the same time. Yes, you yes. You can be fully aware and invested in the, all the horrible things that are going on in the world and also still look forward to some positive things in your life. Exactly, because yes. If there is no light at the end of the tunnel, we would just all be We would just ended. all die. Yeah, like. <laughs> die, die of depression instantly. But it's true. I think that you ha like when some people get a bit arsey about them be like you have to talk about this you have to talk about this and it's like well it, it, you have there has to be a limit because your, do, own, yeah. your your mental health yourself having to deal with all this like because you said about uh being a trans activist and how yeah. you so you really commend the women who are out there being like fighting for trans rights especially because like the lgb alliance is so against trans obviously i know trans guys have oh, the same but yeah. like it does feel most like of the media seems are, to be against trans yeah, women it does feel like um, we are the you know point blank and you know for target. these people having to deal with that all the time i commend you i just couldn't do it my, i could I not, could not cope activist. with the constant abuse i just couldn't cope with it i'd like to think that my mental fortitude and mental health now is in a really good place but it doesn't take a lot to shift me out of that i remember um uh, Paris Lees tweeted about a year ago where she said that she's refusing now any talk show stuff and going yeah. on this one because she's like, I'm sick of justifying my life. I'm sick yeah. of justifying who yeah. I am because it's like nothing. It doesn't seem like anything's they getting don't through. Listen. They, they don't, don't listen. listen. These shows have no intention of trying to aid trans progress. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make a freak show to get reactions, to get laughs, and to they're going to gonna lure you into like saying something that you might not be prepared to say. Yes, or exactly. You might not believe either, which is kind of why I just little stick to my little YouTube lane. It's like that show um genderquake one of my friends was a, 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 oh. like told to go on to it and was like approached to go on genderquake which is basically like a load of trans and non-binary people were living in a house it's basically a big brother for like trans and non-binary people and it was it was what all was about this? it was a few I years ago really it was a few years this. ago and it was I all about it. like let's just see them living together and give them tasks and see what they live like and like so many of the questions the producers were asking my friend were like so if someone misgendered you what would you do and they were like well i would correct them and move on and they're like but would you get really angry and, and they were like uh, well, no, not really. But seriously, what would you get? What would you do? And what they were trying to do is like get, get they, reactions. They what all they wanted for these people to go on the show was fighting yeah. reactions, shock, kind of like they want to make drama. They, they want wanted, drama. they wanted drama, and like because you know they weren't giving it. It was like no, we don't want you then. And it, again, all these shows that claim to be progressive are all just trying to get ratings. They yeah. don't give a shit about you or yeah. your like your community. They I mean, do not care. Literally, if there's anything from the shows that both of us have watched on YouTube and reviewed, I mean, like I, I specifically do a lot of like older reality TV shows. You can see that pattern. Yeah, of, they like, don't care. They cast people purely for the drama. Yeah. And instead of like trying to have a wholesome moment anywhere, they just always opt for ratings. Mm -hmm. Well, well that's, I think that's, I think we've kind of covered everything today actually yeah what a weird little episode i don't think been. i had any more i'm quite enjoying this i quite enjoyed this one so ask reddit kind of turned into advice for your future <laughs> if you would like us to do a second part of this video please let us know and the thing is yes. the, the reddit is like a gold mine of content it really and it's is just it's wonderful it's and a magical little weird place isn't it, it is it? isn't it it's it really strange. is so yeah comment down below yes. uh, what you think about
about anything we've said today in uh-huh. today's episode. Um, so by the next one, you will be living here. I hope so. So yeah, that'd be really not good. Not far away now. Really not Three far weeks. away. Um, so you should be seeing us more frequently. That's really scary. <laughs> oh, that's dark. <laughs> anyway. Yes. This has gone on for a long time, so I'm going to end the outro really quick. Yeah. Thank you for following. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so don't miss any videos that are coming ding, up. Ding, bitch. ding, dong. I've got gout. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all my patrons. Thank you for all the love. Thank you for all the, everything that you're doing. And again, if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, iTunes, or Spotify, thank you for investing time in us. We yes. absolutely adore you. Yes. Um, oh, by the way, the SoundCloud and all the sound audio ones go on a week later because sometimes I see people yes, in the I go, being like, it not done. I, so I, I obviously, because this is my YouTube's my main job, I do put it on YouTube first. Yeah. I give YouTube gets it first and like a week later it then yeah. goes on to the audio That's the platforms it's just how it works so technically there is the same gap if you look in the individual files, pr- files yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh, but anyway thank you for watching guys see you later bye